Hi, I'm Shristi, and in this video, I want to have a look at Meteor. So, Meteor recently raised $20 million to help them create this like super full stack JavaScript framework. But what is Meteor and how did they convince people to invest millions of dollars in what they're doing? Well, if you're interested, that's what we're going to find out. So Mean and Meteor, I've had a little bit of a look at Meteor and from what I see so far, they're kind of like brothers from other mothers, right? Or if you wanted to like boil it right down and you kind of compared them to different types of bread, Mean would be like your normal off the shelf kind of bread and Meteor is kind of like your gluten free variety. Um, it's a little, you know, they're kind of the same, but they're kind of different, you know, like if you're having gluten free bread, you want to, um, you know, toast it twice, make it really crunchy, put on some crunchy peanut butter and delicious. You know, you're good to go. You just got to know how to use it. So putting aside my bread now we're going to just move straight into it. I'm going to compare Mean.js to Meteor and just show you a couple of things for how they're kind of related. And then what I'm going to do in the next video is actually take you through how you can take your mean stack app and move that across, reuse your mean stack knowledge, your angular knowledge, and use all of that, um, kind of leverage all of that in a Meteor stack. What is Meteor? Well, the installation process is a good place to start, right? So for installation, when you've got Mean.js, you need to go through and install certain packages globally. You install normally Node and Bower and Grant and Yeoman, and you go through and do them separately before you actually create the app. Now with Meteor, it's a little bit different because all you have to do is just install Meteor and that actually comes bundled with Node and NPM and it, it all kind of sits in a neat little package. So when you're coming to it from the main stack perspective where everything is open and you can kind of go in and tinker and change around all of your code, in Meteor, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit packaged up. It's kind of, well, Meteor kind of take, takes care of all the things that you wouldn't normally need to worry too much about. Um, and that, that can be a bit of a thing that you need to get used to. It's a little bit uncomfortable at first because you don't really know how it all works until you dive into it, but it's accessible if you need it. So it's kind of there. Um, and you can change things around if you need it, but if you don't want to get into how it all works, you don't have to worry about it. You just install Meteor, it comes with everything you need, and you, you can just use it to start creating your apps. Now, on that note, how do we create new projects and how long do they take? Well, in Mean.js, you can pretty much just do a clone of the Git package, and um, it takes around 10 seconds. I actually timed it. A um, little bit less than that, but I've just kind of rounded it to, to sort of whole numbers. Um, so that's your, your skeleton. So that's just your clone from Git. Uh, it takes about 15 minutes or so when you do an NPM install. So you have to go through and there's quite a lot of packages. So many, in fact, that in the last project that I grabbed using Mean.js 040, it actually came to a disk size of 450 megs. Now, the cool things about it though, is that they're bundled. Yeah, Mainstack is bundled with some popular modules, some samples like articles and express routes and express controllers. And so you've got like, you know, samples of how you can actually just jump straight in and just start changing a few things around and your, your, your app starts to kind of create as you're working through these things. Um, but in order to actually start the app, you need to connect it with a MongoDB. So you either go and um, get a MongoDB from Compose or Mongo um, HQ or, um, or Mongo Labs, I should say, not Mongo HQ, Mongo Labs, um, or you know, one of those um, hosted MongoDBs, or you can install it locally and then you have to just refer to it. So you kind of have to do that yourself. Um, on the Meteor side, it's a little bit different. So Meteor, stuff on the bottom, actually installs and runs with a local MongoDB. So you don't actually have to go and register for Compose or Mongo Labs or anything like that. It's all kind of set up for you when you install it. 
Um, it gives you a very simple structure, so it's very fast to set up. So from a disc size perspective, it's about 73 mags or thereabouts. Um, took me about 30 seconds to get it up and running on localhost and about 40 seconds to install the um, the skeleton so it looked like and i don't know like i'm no i'm no meteor expert but um it looked like it actually goes through and checks to see if packages and things have been updated before it actually goes through and installs for you so that's pretty cool ideally what that would mean is that you have um you know the the most recent version of packages and things that you're installing and there's a lot of seems like from what i've read so far a lot of sort of version y kind of controls around um, how versions and packages and things work together with meteor so again i'm new at it so um, if you know more than me about this stuff then please comment and let me know um, so there's a little bit of a difference in the startup time but again they're kind of different things right if you were um you, you were needing to get something up and running really, really fast and uh, you, you knew what you wanted to create and you had a pretty good idea of um, what you wanted to do with it. Um, Meteor seems like it would be a great way to get up and running really fast. Then you have the similarities and differences between the two kind of stacks. So with, um, with MeanJS, obviously we've got an Angular front end uh, you can use Grunt and Gulp to do all your, use that to, to drive the tasks that you need to perform. And then obviously you've got REST APIs for express um, routes and things like that. Whereas for Meteor, Meteor doesn't really come with Angular. It has its own front end UI templating called Blaze. Uh, but you can add Angular to your Meteor package using Angular Meteor, which is which is pretty handy, but it does have a few nuances and things that you have to work through. But once you've got a handle on that, it seems fairly straightforward. Um, there's this concept of ISO build. So you don't have a grunt or gulp package kind of sitting there. You don't have those files that you can just go in and, and change around if you need to. Things are kind of inherent or part of the Meteor package. So this is kind of, um, it's kind of a little bit more behind the scenes, if you like, um, and you don't need to get involved in that if you don't want to. So it's not like when you go into a main.js package, you've got all those random files kind of sitting there. Everything's kind of hidden away um, for you, but you can go and look into that if you want to. Uh, one of the cool things about Meteor is uh, the DDP or the sort of rest for web sockets. Um, so if you've used uh, Socket.io or um, anything that sort of has this publish and subscribe kind of model or methods to it, um, that may start to become a little bit more familiar to you. Um, but it changes the way um, you kind of think about the way that your data moves from the browser to the server to the database. Um, and that's kind of further extended with um, live query, which is uh, which is a way for you to kind of keep your um, your app in sync with from from a browser to the server. And it it kind of feels like everything is happening instantaneously so it's it's a fairly smart kind of system um, one of the really cool things is meteor deploy so as you're building your app you can deploy it um, to a meteor url and that's free for i guess small packages i'm not sure i haven't looked into exactly how that hosting works but that's been pretty handy so far um, and then one of the other things that I've um, really liked about Meteor so far is that they, it sort of comes with utility packages. So you can use uh, or add a HTTP, HTTP package, which allows you to do things like gets and puts and posts and all that good stuff that you want to do with HTTP. It also comes with an email package, which I haven't looked at in too much detail, but I've read that you can get up to uh, or send up to 200 emails um, using your Meteor Deploy hosting. So that's pretty handy. Now, if we jump across to some of the benefits of MeanJS, um, it comes with a generator, which gives you examples. So that's that's pretty handy, um, especially when you want to move really fast. If, you, if the code that you're trying to create is similar to what comes out of the generator, then that's pretty handy. Um, MeanJS has been pretty popular backend 
for Ionic. Um, Ionic, if you're not familiar with it, uh, lets you create mobile apps using Angular, which is uh, really handy. Um, now, one of the things I really like about MeanJS is, is it, that it's kind of transparent and it has um, somewhat flexible kind of guts, if you like, or the things that kind of glue the pieces together. You can go in and change things around because it's quite obvious um, with, in terms of how things kind of fit together. Um, whereas with Meteor, some of those things, at least initially when you're first starting to use it, um, are kind of hidden away. So the benefits um, of Meteor and MeanJS really depend on what you're actually trying to do. And it, um, yeah, I can definitely think of certain situations when I'd use one over the other, um, but it really depends on what what it is you're you're trying to focus on what you're trying to do okay so that's where i'm going to leave this video in the next one i'm going to pick it up and actually create a meteor app and move across uh, some of the code from one of my previous um, material design demo apps into meteor to see how much of my angular code i can reuse as is and how much i actually have to change up in order to start using meteor for with angular um, so I hope that helped. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out possible.com for more details and I'll see you again soon.